I'm Corey Nockreiner, CISSP and Director of Security Strategy for WatchGuard Technologies, and you're watching WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to summarizing the biggest information and network security stories every week. Let's jump right in with the week starting January 23rd. Starting off the week, Anonymous is still at it, DDoSing a bunch of sites. They were able to take down Universal Music, Vivendi, and they even redirected CBS.com to some non-existent site, making it go offline for a while. Most interestingly of all, they even took one of the Federal Trade Commission sites on guard online and were able to deface this site. And this is a government site actually dedicated to giving users cyber tips on how to uh, avoid internet fraud online. So it was especially ironic that Anonymous was able to knock this site down and, and deface it. Uh, one other story of note about Anonymous is CERT, the Computer Emergency Response Team in the U.S., released an advisory about these anonymous DDoS attacks, which use, again, the LOC tool, the LOC DDoS tool, and they share some tips about what the packet captures look like and what kind of domains they, they're coming from, and these are all tips that might help you block anonymous attacks that are DDoSing your own domains. Check it out. Another story surfaced this week about a cyber attack that affected Pacific Northwest Railways last December. Uh, the TSA, or Transportation Security Association, reported that there was some sort of cyber attack against some unnamed Northwestern uh, Railway uh, Organization. And this cyber attack was apparently able to interfere with the trains enough to affect the schedule at least 15 minutes. Now, they're not really sharing any major details about this. And later in the week, the DHS, or Department of Homeland Security, actually said that this may not have been a cyber attack. But in either case, uh, security researchers are noticing a ton of SCADA attacks, a, a lot of attacks on infrastructure, like you know, power plants and things like that. In fact, this is one of my predictions for this year that we'll see at least one attack, one digital attack that will affect physical infrastructure. So I'd keep your eye out on news for these type of attacks. In the security industry, I often hear people joke that antivirus companies probably ride all the viruses and worms just to increase their business. While I don't really think that's true, this week that fiction became closer to fact. On Monday, Microsoft accused a Russian man of writing the Kilios worm, and this particular man actually worked at two Russian security companies. One was an antivirus firm, and one was a software company that made some special security virtual machine. So it does appear, at least in this case, that there was a botnet creator that worked for security companies. Now the good news is Microsoft started going after this particular botnet way back in September and they have a big lawsuit against its creators. So hopefully the Kilios botnet is gone. Do you have a video conferencing system set up in one of your conference rooms? If so, you might want to put black tape over its lens. According to a story from the New York Times this week, H.D. Moore, who's one of my favorite good guy hackers and researchers and also the creator of Metasploit, found a bunch of vulnerabilities in, in video conference systems like those made by Cisco, Sony, or Polycom. Essentially, he wrote a program that scanned the internet for these video conferencing systems, specifically looking for ones that sat outside a firewall and had some sort of auto-call answering mechanism. And he found that most of the Polycom systems specifically did answer autocall by default and normally sat outside firewalls. So he could gain control of video conferencing systems in big, big enterprises and organizations. And these systems allow you to move the camera around, zoom in, and even read passwords that are on a wall 300 feet away. So very, very dangerous capability. The moral of this story, video conference systems and other IP telephony really do belong be behind access control like firewalls. So you should definitely have a firewall in front of your video conferencing system. Also, make sure to put strong passwords on all its web interfaces and perhaps disable the auto call answering capabilities. I'll end the week by telling you about two flaws in big software products. The first affected Symantec PC Anywhere. 
Over the last few weeks, it's been uncovered that Symantec actually had a network breach that resulted in bad guys, at Indian hackers specifically, stealing a bunch of their source code, including their PC Anywhere source code. Well, this week, the Indian hacker shared the source code with Anonymous, and they quickly figured out there's many vulnerabilities within the software that can allow attackers to do man-in-the-middle attacks on PC Anywhere software. As a result, Symantec released an advisory saying, if you're using PC Anywhere, stop. Turn it off temporarily until they fix this because it's not secure. So if you are using PC Anywhere, I recommend you stop until Symantec tells you otherwise. Another software issue? This week, Google also released a security patch for Google Chrome. So if you're a Google Chrome user, I'd make sure to go to Google and download the latest version. That's it for this episode. And as usual, I'll post links to all these stories on my WatchGuard Security Center post. By the way, if you'd like more regular security story updates, feel free to follow me at Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you next week.